Hi everyone, my name is Herman. I work for, for Red Hat and the virtualization team. And today I want to present like a little tool that is called Pondman Bootsy. But first, I want to give like a very lightweight introduction of what a bootable container is. Well, it's in name, it's a container that you can boot. So, <clears throat> currently if you want to install Linux, for example, you need to use, probably you will use an ISO and use like an Anaconda in case of Fedora, for example, if you want to install it. But uh, what if instead of using an ISO, we put the OS in entirely inside of a container and we use the layer of the containers as layer of, of, of OS3. And now we can have a bootable container and we can use all the infrastructure for containers, like for example, your registry, the CI, CD or the pipeline. So <clears throat> you can create your OS, but that um, put that OS in your pipeline and do all the tests, uh, compliance testing, um, secure scanner, all that stuff that we already know for the container uh, workloads. And then we can deploy it. But we do all these tests and all the, the configurations in an internal trusted system. In that case, or, or, and then we can manage that um, OS just using the, the container tools and the container file. So now the container image is the source of truth of your operating system. We also got uh, atomic updates and rulebook support. So that's basically the idea. You build your base image using a container file. You deploy that container <coughs> and VM, so in bare metal, and then you manage that system using your CSI environment and the Bootsy command that is inside. So basically that's it. That will be now the new way to create like a new OS. You just need your, your container file or Docker file. And then all the difference between uh, one new update of the other is just a new layer in the, in the container. And if you want to deploy it, just for example, you can use kickstart. kickstart. And the new line is this one. So, and that's it. Basically, kickstart you can, will use it for do the partitions and some a little bit of configuration afterwards, and that's it. I mean, I don't know if everyone is familiar with the OS3, but if you are a user of Fedora Silverblue or Bluefin, it's the same system. You can also use um, Bootsy Image Builder to create a new this image and deploy it. And of course, the Bootsy command. A container, a bootable container, usually comes with the not usually. It comes with the kernel, the Linux kernel, systemd, and a bunch of other tools, and especially the bootc. The bootc is also its own installer, so you can install the container using this command. But also you can upgrade it. It means that so if you create a new version of your container, you can upgrade your installation with a new version. Usually it's, it's automatic, so you don't need to do anything, but you can do it manually if you want, or you can switch to a different, a different image. And of course, if something goes wrong, you can roll back and have the previous system run. That will be more clear with a, with a demo. So how Podman BC fits in all these workflow? Basically, to avoid to write all that stuff that I, is long, long comments, a lot of options. So we have like a very opinionated way to install the, the operating system. But basically, for to have this um, cycle of edit, compile, and deploy, it's more like a tool for development than to create like an image that will be deployed in, in production. So the idea is that you, you will use your like a, the Bootsy image builder inside of your CI CD, and that will be deployed. So, for example, to um, to create to install a Fedora 40. Uh, that's all the thing that you need. The default the, the image from Fedora doesn't have, the, uh, it's not defined by the file system uh, that you want, so you need to define it. And, and that's it. Basically, that is Podman Bootsy. So you can run a Bootsy container, 
um, SSH into the, the, the VM that is created by the boot C. And then the other commands are to manage those temporal VMs that we create. One thing is the uh, container image usually doesn't have any virtual agent, so like a, a QM or virtual agent or guest agent or anything like that. So Podman boot C will inject an SSH key using SMBIOS from and, and the VM. And so for you don't need to, to put anything inside of the, the, the container image to get the SSH. But if you have like a, um, a container that has like a um, cloud init agent, for example, we can use that also in the run. The idea is all these VMs are ephemeral. So it's just to test all your changes in, in, your, in your container. Yeah? So basically, every time you shut down that VM, all the changes will be lost. That is cache. Basically, our VM, that this image, is a cache of your container image. So currently, it's a, okay, it's, a, it's a work in progress, this tool. So currently, if you want to install it on Fedora, you need to, to use like a, copper, a copper repository. Or if you are using Mac OS, you can use Homebrew to install it. Yeah? And demo time. Recorded some videos because I don't trust myself to do live. So I feel now like a new pop singer that they do in playback. So. <laughs> I hope he's big enough. I don't know if he can do it big, bigger because it's a video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, uh, sorry? When I will learn for the next time. That, uh, <laughs> well, basically, is uh, this tool requires, even in, in, in Linux, requires uh, a Podman machine. So, because for, for install the, the container image, we need uh, root access. So instead of creating the, uh, forcing you to use root, we use the Podman machine that is a, a VM, and we are root inside of that, of that VM to create the, the, the image. It's similar, you know that if you have Mac OS, you need to use Podman machine to run all the containers. So it's the same, it's the same idea. From here, is, I'm able to read it. So <laughs> basically, I'm just checking that my Ponda machine is rootful. I have a root access. And then I will just run the bootsy command that I showed it before, just to install the base image. Usually, the, the whole idea is not to, to install the base image. The idea is you will use that base image to derive your own, your own container and install all your things. Just to show you that uh, with Podman Boot C, even the, the base image that doesn't have any agent or uh, anything, a user or password, is easy to create something just to test it. Well, when I did the demo, I forgot to pull first the image. so. The, I will pull the image first. I will not, you don't need to read all the digests. Yes?
Yeah, well, uh, the question was really long, so I'm not. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. In the base image is, uh, sorry, he's asking if there is um, any concept of provisioning, like for example, use ignition or cloudinate or all the stuff. Uh, in the base image, no. We don't have any, anything. But you can add it. Uh, there is some example there is, I think is, if I'm mistaken, we have some uh, image that has uh, cloudinate installed. But, but there is no reason to not do it. So if you want to do it, you can do it. Uh, we don't support ignition in Pond Bamboo C yet, but we support cloud init. So if you have a, a container image that has cloud init, just uh, that was the end of the demo, by the way. Uh, no, no, no. No, it's just deploying the image. Um, then I will show you the comments, but um, you just need to point me to the point the tool to the cloud init uh, YAM, and, and that's it. But it's overview, so this base image doesn't have anything. And this is the full image. It has a lot of stuff, then uh, the network manager and, and lot of other tools. But there also there is like a, my, a minimal image that I think is like, let's assume there is only the kernel, systemd, and bootsy. And then you can build on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My next video is is able to read something, then. <laughs> It's how to how how the the idea of to to work with this. Yeah, it take longer because also I was doing other stuff in my machine. So also. I didn't try it with the Raspberry Pi, but um, ah yes, how to install this in a Raspberry Pi, basically, no? Um, <clears throat> I didn't try it, but I will do it uh, as soon as I go back home. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's just the the comment that we have. Um, um, sorry, I lost my line of thought. Uh, well, the problem is that we need a Linux to install a Linux. So even with an ISO, inside of the ISO is a live system. So yeah. of course you can use an ISO to do the first installation, just to boot uh, um, Anaconda and then point to the kickstart, point into the container, for example. And I will install that in bar meta. Using that one, for example, that will be one. And also, probably with the uh, image builder, you can create like a raw image and DD that in the in the um, SD. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that's the idea. Uh, you create a container file. In the top is just like uh, the, the full image from Fedora. And then I'm just installing the HTTPD and copying some uh, index file, HTML, inside. So a very simple, basic thing.
So, well, I will build, I'm building a new uh, uh, the, the container using Podman. I, I just tag in that uh, container. It's not really necessary if you, if you plan to work locally and just test things. But since I plan to, I will push that to a registry, so I'm tagging that to, to work it preferably. But if you don't want to tag it and have like a local host, wherever that is the automatic thing, that will be enough. So now, the good thing is now you can, you can run that container. Instead of install it, install it like using Podman would see, you can run that container as a container in Podman. So you can go inside and do also some different tests, install something. Ah, one thing that I almost forgot, if, if you saw, I was using DNF to install uh, things inside of the container file. If you are familiar with um, Fedora Silverbrew or all the OS3 based system, usually we need to use RPM OS3. It's not necessary if you are using the thing inside of the container file. So it's like a normal container file, basically. The only difference is the base image. Okay, now I, went, I will install this container in a, in a virtual machine. Exactly the same command than before, but now I will run, I will run the virtual machine, but as background. Instead of running like a in foreground. Yes. Yeah, I just need to point to the base image that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 I get it. Uh, he's asking me if we can convert a, a normal container file to a bootable one. Installing like a, just installing Bootsy. Uh, currently, com currently, converting like a normal system to a, a bootable, a Bootsy based system. Correct me if I'm wrong, Colin. Because if you have very difficult questions, you can ask him. So, um, uh, just because he created all of this, so. Um, so, okay. Um, currently, uh, uh, you cannot convert like a normal system to a to a, a boot C based system. But if you have the container file, the only thing that you need is just to the base image that you derive your container file just point it to the boot C one. So. Okay, I keep it too much. Too little. I think the video is even worse than on live, huh? I thought it would be easier, but no. Okay, I just push in the, the that container to uh to the registry. And then in my other in, in the in the other terminal I already have the previous uh, the previous one running. So I just will I will do like a very simple change in the in the index. That typo is on purpose. And just build and push the new the new one. And I still okay. And in my in the in the VM, now I just call Pullman update. And it will download the the new layers and install the new system. So that's basic the, the basic idea. You create the, your yes.
uh, yeah, why not? If you install it, that if you can make like a RPM and uh, install that, that image, yes, because the kernel doesn't have any, anything special. All the spicy magic things is in the Bootsy binary. The only thing is currently is only a, a rail Fedora CentOS system. The idea is to be open to more distribution, but currently it's complicated. Yes. Yes. Uh, it just the I, I think now is what I will I, I will do. Ah, sorry. How do you do a, a rollback? Yeah. Now, for example, now I updated that VM, so we have the new version, and you see that you have like a two layers from OS3. Uh, if I check the 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 new HTML, we see that is that typo, the the new the new thing. So I want to revert that. So basically, the only thing that I need to do is would see rollback. Yeah, it's automatic. Uh, sorry, the update is automatic, the rollback no. But you can automate uh, to be automatic that if you take an error or something to rollback automatically. Yes. Ah, uh, if there is any API behind Bootsy, no, it's just the binary. Yes. Yes. So, okay, but that's it. You do rollback, then reboot, and you have the previous, your previous version. All the, out, the, the updates is uh, atomic. So, the only downside with, with the, at least if you're familiar with, uh, with uh, Cipher Blue, is the same, that when you update or rollback, you need to reboot the system. Let's say there's a downside, but from my point of view, that is a feature. Because now you, your image in the disk is exactly what you are running. You don't have like a difference between what you are running and what is installed in your machine. And that's it. Uh, so future plan for this tool. The idea is to remove the Podman machine requirement in Linux to support the Bootsy image builder because currently we are doing our own installation using Bootsy, which is installed. On Mac OS, we want to support current kit. That is, um, they use the um, Apple hyper, um, hypervisor, not the virtualization framework, the thing that is similar to KVM. So that will allow you to have like a CPU sharing and a better VirtuFS support on Mac OS. Also, we want to support Windows. Uh, we plan to add a couple. Yeah, I feel dirty after I say that. Um, <laughs> we, we want to have the, like a two, uh, couple of commands that convert and export to export the image that we already created if you want to test a little bit more. And also, Podman integration. The idea is to eliminate the dash in the middle to be like a, a command of, the, of Podman itself in the future. So, if you want to learn more, Tomorrow in this same room, uh, Daniel, uh, Colin, and Steph, we will be doing like a, a lighting tag, explaining, doing a better job than me explaining this. And well, these slides are in the, in the schedule, so there is a bunch of uh, places to learn more about this, the Fedora Boot C, um, the documentation from, from boot, bootable containers, and some blogs from from Red Hat Enterprise. And also there are some videos also for the Red Hat Summit that, uh, with a little bit more explanation to, to that. And that's it. Thank you.
So I think still we have time for questions. More questions. Is it possible to use volumes with Bootsy? Uh, with Podman Bootsy, uh, I mean volumes in, in what sense? Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, currently, we have a pull request to do that. Basically, but yes, in, in, it's one of the things that we want to add, to add, to be able to add any volumes and sharing between the VM and the host using VirtualFS. Anything else? Okay, thank you.